everyone. Here we have a civic engagement platform here for the Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, J.P. Gus Gotzi. Always exciting to be here. We got Max back in the studio. He's the magic man technician. And your Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce, it's coastalvachamber.com under the leadership of Gary Seabiler, an attorney from Virginia Beach. And, of course, our executive chairman, Ron going away, but we welcome you to be a part of our team. We're all about small business. We're growing and we're dynamic and we want to help you grow your business. With us today is Rick James, Richard James. I mean, he goes by Rick and there will not be any Rick James jokes because he's probably heard them all. He's a retired police officer and a uh, 20 year Navy man. I believe Army, 20 Army. 20 years Army. See, I'm already screwing up, Mr. James, but welcome to the Coast of Virginia Chamber of, of Commerce, and uh, congratulations on running. You've got a big 90th district there in Norfolk race, where you're one of the two candidates, and I want to go on board that his uh, opponent, which we won't mention her name, but she did not respond to our request for the interview, but Mr. James was kind enough to welcome and Tell us why you're running and a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm running because of I'm very concerned <clears throat> about uh, the citizens of the 90th district, which includes citizens in the city of Norfolk and citizens in the city of Virginia Beach. Uh, my name again is Richard James. I'm a Norfolk native. I graduated from Maury High School in 1981 at the age of 16. The day I turned uh, 17, I shipped off to the United States Army to be an airborne combat medic uh, with the United States Army 2nd Infantry Division, and then uh, the 82nd Airborne Division, America's God of Honor down at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. You know, I, I grew up in the military because I was a little kid when I joined at 17, but boy, they turned me into a man very, very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> they, showed that. they turned me into a man quickly. Well, when I got out of the military, I came back home to Norfolk, and uh, my veterans counselor asked me about being in law enforcement, which I did. I was a uh, detective and police officer with the Norfolk Police Department for 27 years, which I enjoyed uh, serving the citizens of, of Norfolk. While on the police department, the citizens uh, assisted me with getting my bachelor's degree in uh, criminal justice and administration, a master's degree in government and public policy, and a legal education. So I'm very, very proud of that uh, accomplishment while well, being you a should police be officer. proud. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty tall, tall accomplishments. You know, all I know is I watch the uh, detective shows, a police officer is where you start, a flat foot or whatever they call them where you're out working the beat. But then you have to take tests in order to get uh, advanced to a detective, which then you're like Lieutenant Columbo, right? Yeah, some, you know, the detective, when detectives are the person in charge of the crime scene. Uh, if the assistant chief comes up, the detective's in charge of the crime scene. That's how it works. It's a huge uh, responsibility. So uh, I took that job very, very seriously. And, and um, after I retired from the police department, I ended up being a department head at Tidewater Community College for uh, criminal justice and forensic science. Uh, with, with I had 100 and, about 120 people working underneath me. And we brought the forensic science and the public law uh, career development uh, uh, curriculum to Tidewater Community College. And I'm also the chairman of legal redress for the uh, NAACP in Norfolk for seven for the last seven years. And what people don't know about the chairmanship with the NAACP is that, you know, we represent what we call members of a protected class. And who are those members of a protected class? It's all women, all children, all persons with disabilities, all senior citizens, and all minority groups. So that means it includes you, because you look like a senior citizen. No, this can't. <laughs> Easy now. What? what? <laughs> this this interview's just gone down south gone real south. quick now. <laughs> so that so most people don't know that um, is that the NWCP we protect a lot of people, and and only thing we ask for is, is is fair treatment for everybody, particularly with senior citizens, and particularly with a person with disabilities. So, um, not only that, you know, you know, I've been very very active. Uh, in the city of Norfolk and the city of Virginia Beach. My, my children uh, graduated from uh, Salem High School in the city of Virginia Beach. My wife and I both uh, are from, from, from Norfolk. 
And so we really appreciate uh, all the things we do. I've been involved in government in the city of Norfolk, and you might, may also know that I am the um, uh, legislative assistant for and the community outreach director for the Senate of Virginia for the fifth Senate district. And I've been doing that job for the last um, uh, four years. And, and I appreciate that. Who's the senator? That. Who's the senator from there? I should know it, but I don't care. It's remember. Senator Lionel Spruill Sr. Spruill Sr. Yes, sir. For, so I've been working with in, in the Senate of Virginia for the last four years. And, and, you know, they wanted to make sure I know the job of a legislator. And if you don't mind, I can tell you the, the four main jobs or duties of a legislator. Number one, it is to shape and form public policies, laws and processes that will become statutes to govern the state of Virginia. Number two, to vet and elect judges in Norfolk and Virginia Beach and across the state in general district courts, courts of appeal, juvenile domestic courts, circuit court of record, and the, the Virginia Supreme Court. Three, to approve the governor's appointments to boards and commissions, airport commissions, colleges and universities, ABC commissions and boards. Four, the last one is to approve an annual bu budget and pass a physical policy on how to spend those monies. Those are the duties and the rules of a member of a general assembly and anybody that's gonna take that job and to be ready on day one must know it from memory. It is a very serious job to do and you can't mislead people on the things that you can do and you cannot do. That's very impressive right there. I uh, I don't know if I could have run through all four of those that quickly. I would have had to do uh, some thought. But Rick James joins us here on the Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce. J.P. Gus Gatsi, your host here with another civic engagement platform. They have a big election for the 90th district uh, that's, that's going to the Democratic primary. And then they'll have a special election, I guess, in January. Is that right? It's, yes, sir. It sounds like that the governor called it for January the 5th. And so for the general. The, who's going to be uh, the your opponent there? Will the Republicans have an will the Republicans have somewhere? And that's they're having a primary, I guess, on Sunday. That's correct. I don't I don't I'm not familiar with the two uh, persons that's running. Uh, but but whoever wins their primary on Sunday will face the winner of the primary on Saturday. That's that's what I thought. It's going to be at Lincoln High School, if I'm not mistaken. Again, Saturday, December 5th. It's a drive up. Lake Taylor, drive Lake Taylor High School. Lake Ta they're going to come out and give you a, a ballot and everything's social distance. You keep your own pen, face mask on. We've all heard it a thousand times. You cast your vote real quick. And that's from oh, what one o'clock to five o'clock. What's the times? The time is ten a.m. to four p.m. Ten to four. So plenty of time for all the voters to drive through there. You said that you have a, a little sliver of Virginia Beach. I think it's just a few hundred votes over there, but uh, I'm sure those people can drive over and vote as well. They can, and, and you better believe I've talked to every last one of them. Good for you. That's what it comes down to, knocking on those doors. Again, Rick James, he's run for office before. He certainly seems to be very knowledgeable on the, um, on the, on the responsibilities. Let's talk about your platform, some of the major things. The Democratic majority in Richmond that just got flipped, they came out with uh, a lot of things on gun control and uh, other things, and especially in that extended session, which, why don't we start with that? Why in God's name did that extended special session, which they usually last a week, last for three or four months or however long it was? Well, because there's a whole lot of, you know, the, 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 the original intent of the special session is because of COVID-19. And you, as, as you all, you know that the state of Virginia cannot have a deficit. And so the budget that they had would not um, uh, balance their budget because of the shortcoming of in, uh, revenues coming in because of, of COVID-19. So the governor called a special election to amend the budget. Because remember, we have to approve it. The, the General Assembly had to approve an annual budget. It had to be amended so there would be enough money in the coffers to pay all the bills. While there, then each, each um, member can, can produce separate bills if they wish. And that's exactly what happened. There are certain things that came up. They decided to, the speaker decided to extend the, the session to make sure that there is a, a different bills that wanted to be passed by 
the members of, of the General Assembly. That's what seemed to cause a lot of the paper wrote about it. I saw a lot of letters to the editor that caused confusion, if not outright resentment, because in the past, special sessions were historically, and this one was supposed to be just for the budget, but people were bringing up all kinds of things on, on uh, going back to the police um, cutbacks or whatever. And there were bills that had nothing to do with the budget that the speaker was allowing to be brought. It seemed like that was a little bit of an abuse of power. What do you think? Because I don't want to get political on that. Well, uh, you know, of course, you know, the rules are very, very clear. And as long as if, if, if the rules are not violated, it's up to the members to vote on how they want to move, move forward. The bottom line is that it is my job as a member of the House of Delegates is due to, to do the work of the people. And I can tell you right now from talking to all the people in my citizens in, in the district, their concerns are concerned about their businesses. They're concerned about their health. They're very, very concerned about their children's education. And they're concerned about the services that we are providing on the state level, particularly DMV, uh, the Unemployment Commission, and the services that people need to get their lives going. Even a, a developer, if he wants to get uh, certain paperwork done, it's, it's a slowdown on that. And it's affecting our economy. It's affecting our livelihood. And we need to be about doing the work of the people and doing it very, very quickly. And we must understand the rules. That's why I quoted out the rules. Because if there's any violation of the rules, I'll be the first one to speak up and say, no, nope, we're here to do this, and the rules say you're going to do A, B, and C. If I was playing football, I wanted you to be the referee, the headlines, but I can see that right now. Rick James, we only have a minute or so left. Uh, the number one issue that you heard from constituents or citizens, if you will, what, what everybody told me it was COVID. Is, is that the number one thing, but is there something else they're passionate about? In yeah, it, 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 you, you, you hit the nail on the head. I haven't had, with all the conversations we've had throughout the whole district and in the city of Virginia Beach, the number one thing that people were talking about was COVID and how it relates to either their business, their families, their children's education, and their income. And that we need to have a collective response from the governor because the governor had that responsibility under Article 5 of the Virginia Constitution. We need to have a collective response that we can get rid of COVID once and for all before we can get back to normal. That is number one, it's affecting everything. And we need to be about our business and get this under control as a state. Because if we wanna bring businesses here to the state, we must show that we are working together and unified to handle crises when they come and not be divided when it comes to crisis. One of the uh, last things, and one of our primary things is, is uh, social goods or responsible discourse in our political systems. You and I both know COVID is not black or white, Republican, Democrat, right or left, although it was clearly made into a political issue, unfortunately. But uh, are you willing to say in the election that you will have a respectful election and have civil discourse? Because Again, that's one of our primary focuses. Well, let me say this to you. We are all Virginians. We all have family and I, I have family and I have 12 grandchildren. And my children and my family and my friends like yourself and my neighbors, they want me to represent them. My job is the voice of the people. It's not about my personal feelings, how I hate someone. It's about me representing the citizens. And if the citizens have trust in me, like they had trust in me when I was 17 years old and they sent me off to fight for my country, that I will fight just as hard for them, all citizens of the 90th district, all citizens of Norfolk and Virginia Beach, which I'll be serving, that I will fight for them like they've never seen before because this is serious business. It's affecting everybody, no matter what, it's affecting all Americans, all Virginians, and we should work together and get the job done. You heard it right there. Rick James, he wants to be your delegate in the 90th District Special Election this Saturday from 10 to 4. Four drive up, uh, certainly safe and secure. And we hope you can be there. We'll have this up hopefully tomorrow on our website. You're welcome to use it on yours in the three or four days we have. Any last closing words? Give your website or any way people can contact you. Yes, they can contact me at 757 
692-9222 and rjames.district05 at gmail.com. Rick James been with us here on the Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce Civic and, and Engagement Platform. We hope you get to vote if you're in that district on Saturday, 10 to 4 at Lake Taylor High School. Thank you for coming, Mr. James. And thank I appreciate you for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Coastal Virginia Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. God bless you all.